All right, so now let's talk about twisting those three areas of the body. And this is important because when we start to do these more dynamic poses, uh, we have to realize that each one kind of takes a little bit different orientation and those uh, slight and sometimes very noticeable adjustments can make uh, a big difference. So uh, let's just do this. We'll start with the torso. We'll make sure that we're looking up at it. The upper torso. So just like that, we've got an established uh, prism for our upper torso. And so the tricky part is getting the pelvis to, uh, you know, we got to think about where the spine would be. So it's going to come down, it's going to S hook, it's going to be something like that. And, you know, obviously we're guessing, right? It's hard to like look through and pinpoint exactly where the spine would be, but that gives us a an idea and a representation to start with. And then, uh, again, I think the hardest part is really placing the orientation of the pelvis. So, for instance, it's easy enough to go like this because it matches the existing prism, uh, but that's very boring, right? And in fact, with everything that we've done thus far, we realize that that's not how the uh, pelvis is oriented. Even in a standard position, it doesn't do that. So we know that it at least tilts away like this, right? But still, that's still, it's boring, right? It's not entering interesting enough. Now to twist that uh, shape, it becomes a little bit trickier because we have to think about a couple uh, things here. So to do that, we're going to twist it where it's closer to our view. So I'm going to start by establishing a center on this one. And the reason being is because I'm going to start with the front plane of just this shape, but down here on the pelvis. So we want the orientation of the tilt but we want the front plane to be towards us uh, slightly more. So when in doubt, just start with something, right? It's hard to, it's hard to gauge where you're at if you can't make a mark. Uh, I could sit here and think about it all day, but it's not gonna get me anywhere. If I'm, if I'm unsure, I just have to make a mark. So this gives me the impression that it's tilted a little bit closer to our view. I can check that by finding center and just remember, you can crisscross your diagonals if that is better for you. Um, so that is a, tilted a little bit better. Um, another way to think about this is finding, let's say, the opening for the shoulders and drawing this line through like this and then doing the same thing over here. Actually, I'm going to get rid of the first little mark here. So drawing through it like this. So you can see that just based upon that, there's a little bit of tilt difference there. Uh, we could probably explore that a little bit further, but that's hard to say. Like, I, th I think that might be fine. So the other thing is we really want, we really want a little bit more of this tilt as well. So I'm gonna adjust these lines a bit before I go any further. So I like the tilt, like if I was to look at the two, uh, to show you the two primary lines I'm studying right now, I like the tilt orientation here to here. Okay, I, I feel like that's pretty uh, adequate for the, the stretch and pinch that I wanna see in the body. So the pinch would occur on this side, and then the stretch would occur on this side. Okay, so, or extension and pinch, however you wanna look at that, but that's, that's kind of what I'm focusing upon as I place these uh, these forms. So let's continue on with that. I think that's about right. And so let's go ahead and establish, we're getting that tilt here, that angling of the, uh, the prism away from us. So something like that. We've got the spine. And let's bring this down and attach the head. And so I think what I want to do here is really just point the head away. So I'm going to start with a, and I've jumped through and drawn um, 
you know, head shapes at this stage is really more natural for me. But what I'm going to do is just show you in a step-by-step -step fashion how I would think about that. Now the spine of the neck uh, centers under and, and behind, uh, pretty much like right under the ear. So that's about right. But the main thing is that we want to establish again that now we're looking away, uh, or the head is looking away, and so we have three distinct different orientations of these areas. The torso and pelvis are you know, relatively the same, and we'll try to um, uh, push that a bit further, but they, they have you know, different orientations, right? So that'll be our first step right there, our first stage of the work. So let's bring that over. Okay, so now this becomes our perspective in a sense, but our you know information to house the next stage. So let's go ahead and soft erase this back. And let's lay in our more organic shapes. So rib cage. We already got our center line right here to help us out, so we'll go with that. Get our W like shape in there. Overall kind of uh, egg shape here for the rib cage. Show that underneath just for a sense of dimension. Opening for the shoulder, which I probably will bring that up higher. So again, like I mentioned before, each one of these things uh, becomes a bit of a placeholder and can expose other areas in the work that need to be corrected. That's how I see that. And cross section for the chest. And then let's see. So the abdomen will come down here. Well, first we'll get in the three main masses and then we'll see if we can work into this a bit further. So now um, the pelvis, you see the center line's way over here. So that's where that difference in orientation is. I want to establish that early on so I don't uh, lose that. Opening for the legs. Trying to figure out how much of this I really want to cut into, but it's not that big of a deal. We're, you know, this is really a representation, right? So we would, the main thing is that they're even from side to side, and that's where the cross section here is kind of exposing that for me. So when in doubt, more guidelines, more, um, I don't want to call these searching lines. I guess they're called wrapping lines, but at the same time, uh, any lines that help you to see and convey depth and dimension on these forms. Uh, so if you need a center line on the side, you know, side center line, uh, whatever, wherever you might need them, you can cross divide them more if that helps you. Uh, that will help with things like placing uh, clothing features and things like that. It just, uh, just seems to help quite a bit. You can also find the center line to the abdomen and bring that down as well. So you, you see the spine, I'm letting that stay faded in the background. I don't need that information as much. It's still there to give me a sense of that, uh, that arc to the back. But uh, I'm not going to keep drawing through it because I don't, again, I don't need it as much right now. And then for the head. Find that, uh, that center. Find the brow line. Run the line across. Draw down, draw the chin back to this line. For a female chin, I'd probably go a little bit more uh, slender to the chin, even at this stage. I like to uh, convey that as quickly as possible. And I feel like the this is the spine right there, so that does meet about in the right area. 
but I feel like the head is postured maybe a little too far back. So I'll keep an eye on that. Ear here. That line I like to put from the side. I picked up from the Andrew Loomis method there. So now we have a distinct difference from the orientation of the three masses of the body. And so this obviously could be stretched a lot further, but I want to start small, you know, small intervals with you and get you to feel comfortable slowly twisting these forms. But also what the real purpose of this is that you see how the body might look differently uh, as you study it. So for instance, you start to pay more attention to the orientation of the rib cage to the pelvis. Uh, and just so you know, now I'm going to clean this up for you. This is a little bit sped up because it's really just retracing the steps and saying, okay, now we've got some forms in place. Uh, I like to clean them up for your reference, but you really don't need to do this for your studies. It's totally up to you. Uh, I just think that, you know, for supplying you some artwork to study from, uh, giving you the stages as well as a cleaned up version uh, might be a nice addition. So, but again, now when you study from life and, and even just creating characters from your imagination, I just want you to pay special attention to, well, could I twist that rib cage a little bit more? Could I tilt those hips a little bit more away from it? Uh, really bring out the pinch and the fold uh, of the body in the midsection. So, you know, and, and obviously the head just has tons of orientation options, right? The twisting, the tilting, leaning back, uh, putting the chin down to the collarbones, all sorts of stuff. Uh, but again, I want to start basic here with you and slowly work you up to that because it can be a little bit confusing and it's not something that you need to rush right into. Just practice drawing these primitive shapes and forms, do lots of studies with what I've shown you here. Uh, let me see those because then I can you know, possibly analyze them and see where I can help you with that. And notice in this final rendition, uh, I just used the center line to the abdomen. Uh, I didn't continue on with the spine. So you know, either or or both of those is fine, but uh, I felt it was better to just use that. So good luck with this particular study and let's move on to our next lesson.